we all want something that's a miracle substance that's going to reduce pain, take away inflammation, eradicate cancer, get rid of the concerns about Alzheimer's and related uh, neuro disorders. Is there such a thing out there? Can we take something that's pretty much harmless to us that has all those different effects? Hi guys, welcome back. So those claims sound pretty radical and you would normally associate claims like that with a prescription drug that's got all kinds of side effects and problems associated with it. And these claims are actually made about a supplement that probably you've all taken before in your lives and not even realised it. And there are many, many studies now coming out backing up some of the claims being made about this. And the substance is turmeric. So that's the uh, yellowish um, spice that you might have had in a curry. There's a substance in turmeric called curcumin. And that is the, the substance that is thought to have great benefits to people. So there's a lot of articles out there online that are, you know, dodgy to say the least. They're not really backed up with any hard science and they're just people making like crazy claims, a bit like I made at the beginning of this, uh, this video. The difference being that I'm going to back some of that up because I've actually read into it. I've bothered to go into the science and have a look at some of the studies to see if those claims are true or not. Uh, but beware you know if you're thinking that you are going to take this and be magically cured of cancer or you're not going to get cancer because you're taking a turmeric supplement or a curcumin supplement then you know to, you know you need to take those claims with a pinch of salt and we're going to have a dig into whether it's worth taking or not why I would take it if I have been taking it and uh, you know whether you guys should bother with it. So firstly, let's have a look from the, the safety standpoint that all substances have some concern with them that you may have an allergy. You know, that you cannot ever rule that out that there's going to be um, one person in however many hundreds of thousands that's going to have some sort of adverse reaction. So nobody is going to sit here and tell you that these things are all 100% safe for everyone. You know, even foods, if everyone ate the same food, then there would be a few people out of all the people in the world that have a, a really nasty adverse reaction to it. But other than that, other than the, you know, the one-off sort of adverse reactions or allergies or intolerances, actually it's an incredibly safe substance. There's no particular toxicity to it. You know, the LD50 is so high that you'd have to literally eat more than your body weight to actually have any um, effect. I mean, you would probably choke to death on it just because of that you were fitting so much down your throat than you would before it was able to uh, poison you in any way. So incredibly safe in that regard. Side effects wise, it doesn't seem to have particularly noticeable side effects. Uh, like I say, there will be the odd few people that experience very unusual uh, side effects from it, but they are, you know, one in hundreds of thousands of people. Most of us can take turmeric or the uh, compound curcumin, which is in turmeric, and we're not going to experience anything unusual. So let's go through what it's supposed to do in terms of health benefit and whether or not I believe it will do that. And I'll come clean now. I have been taking turmeric or I've been taking a, a curcumin supplement. And one of the important things to say about it is to make it bioavailable, to make it able to actually get into your system and do the proper job and to have any of these benefits that you would have to take it in quite a, a quantity to get enough of the curcumin part of it. You want to buy one of the supplements that has the curcumin in it and also has a black pepper extract in there. And that increases the bioavailability of the curcumin in your body greatly. So I think it's called piperine. 
and uh, most will label it just as black pepper extract but you definitely want to look for a, a supplement that's got that in there I'll chuck a couple of links down below you know Amazon links they generate a few pence for the site if you buy off of here you know if you follow that link and you buy a, a product it will give me a, a few pence towards the lighting bill so that's always handy uh, but I will pick out supplements on there that I personally use and I, I think are good. So the first claim and the one that I was very interested in was inflammation reduction. Now some of you will know I've posted about it before that I've got various different problems in parts of my body from you know sports injuries, old injuries and stuff. Um, specifically in my elbows they give me a lot of stress and also in my back. My back's been a lot better lately just in general I think where I've been training and I've built up muscle there you know that's really helped and uh, kind of freed it up a bit but I still do get um, what people would call golfer's elbow or tennis elbow and basically it just feels really painful if you're uh, bending your arm you start getting sort of pulling up here and it feels like everything is really tight in here so uh, a lot of people will take you know NSAIDs non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for those things like ibuprofen and I don't take those the reason being is because uh, number one they're awful for your liver and kidneys you know they're bad for your stomach lining uh, you know they're highly detrimental to your health they also have been shown to significantly affect uh, gains in muscle uh, you know they impact on that they actually prevent you from gaining muscle to a small degree and that's definitely not something I want to take you know even without the the health risk concern if they were like eradicating my ability to build decent lean mass then I would be avoiding them like the plague and the other problem with them is that after a while you know the you take them the dose just doesn't work so people up the dose and it's like a lot of those type of drugs you're just you know dosing more and more to get the same result and in the end you're, you're basically poisoning yourself with the things and they cost a lot of money so I've never been interested in treating any of my injuries like that I may occasionally use them you know if I'd fallen over and bashed myself and I was in absolute agony you, I might use them as a temporary sort of two or three day measure to just uh, give pain relief the same as you would if you had a really bad headache or whatever but they're not something I look at as a long term option. So I was very interested in this uh, turmeric or curcumin from that perspective I wanted the inflammation reduction. Now this was the part where the studies really absolutely back up what is is the claim so the claim is you know that people with arthritis can take this or people with any sort of joint issues and joint pain and it's going to greatly reduce their joint pain and when we have a look at the studies that does back it up you know there are numerous studies uh, specifically for people with arthritis but also just for people that suffer from general joint pain and maybe have not been diagnosed as arthritic and the groups were gauged against people that were taking placebos, people that were taking NSAIDs like ibuprofen and then people that were given uh, turmeric tablets or this curcumin however you want to say it and the groups that took the turmeric had a huge decrease in joint pain um, they had a measured decrease in inflammation uh, they were measuring inflammatory markers in the body and there was a measured decrease in that and it, they reported back that they got even more pain relief than the NSAID group reported back so they were asked to gauge pain on you know like a 1 to 10 scale of um, whether or not it had gotten worse or better and uh, the, the groups that were doing the best were the groups that were given the turmeric supplements and this is multiple studies and they were good studies you know they were well put together and they've been peer-reviewed and there is a lot of medical professionals out there who are now starting to suggest that uh, their clients that have arthritis etc would maybe start going to a health food store and procuring themselves some turmeric because these doctors know full well that some of the NSAIDs and some of the 
other um, prescription medications for arthritis, most of them have a bunch of horrendous side effects and they do stop working after a while. So I started taking the, the turmeric supplement and that was about two months ago. And you know, I take a variety of vitamins. I take vitamin C, uh, vitamin D, a multivit, uh, fish oil, and all, all for general health. I don't believe most of those help me in the gym at all, but I just take them for general health. And I have seen incredible results from the turmeric. Uh, my elbow pain has probably 90% decrease. So uh, I'm able to do my exercises, I'm training triceps, I'm benching, I'm not getting any noticeable pain. I used to wrap my elbow sometime when I trained, I haven't even needed to do that. And I, you know, I've just had no issues at all. Um, I still get a little bit of a twinge. I don't think that's ever gonna go away, but like I say, 90% improvement on that. So I will continue to take the turmeric just for that. I, I think that is for me fantastic you know it's um, I wouldn't say life-changing because it wasn't like I was so debilitated I couldn't get on with my life but it certainly made things a lot more pleasant for me and I can tr train in the gym with a little bit more vigor and not be sort of concerned that I'm going to be in pain the next day it certainly improved my um, work because there were times when I'd train in the gym and then the next day at work I'm kind of sat at my desk and I'm struggling sometimes to type and I'm having to take rests and then type a bit more or take another rest etc just because my elbows were so painful. So the other claims that are made you know they are um, all kinds of different claims and it sounds like it's this miracle substance which maybe it is uh, but we need to take these you know with a pinch of salt as always like a, a little bit of suspicion because like I said there's plenty of people on the internet that are peddling this stuff and they're just going to tell you it, it cures everything so some of the studies that have been done have been on dementia patients and a lot of the internet claims are oh you know you take this you're never going to get dementia or if you take this it's going to cure dementia well, th there's not a huge amount of studies that have been done, but there are some. And those studies are not big enough or enough of them to say sort of conclusively, yes, you know, it does this, it cures this, or it eradicates the risk of dementia. But what they did find is that in the studies that they did, there was an improvement in memory for Alzheimer's sufferers over a period of months. Uh, the improvement was certainly measurable, um, you know, so that is a fairly dramatic improvement. And if you've got Alzheimer's and you get any improvement, then that's gonna be a worthwhile thing. Uh, and given the fact that this is cheap and has no real side effects, I would say, you know, if, if that's something that concerns you, then uh, it's certainly worth taking. It's something that concerns me because I'm subject to a lot of uh, blast pressure waves from work. So um, I, I'm on the high end risk factor of getting sort of a, um, a repetitive brain injury, which can lead to things like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. So if this has any neuroprotective ability, then I'm, I'm all in, you know, because like I said, it's cheap and uh, it's, it's not harming me at all. So why would I not? But I'm certainly not in the camp that's saying, yeah, it absolutely does that. We need to have a lot more research in that area to come to any uh, large conclusions. And obviously that's ongoing. Pain reduction, uh, we've kind of touched a little bit on that. So um, this is a difficult one because the pain reduction, most of the studies where they link uh, the idea of pain reduction is through the studies to do with arthritis and joint pain, etc. So of course those people report pain reduction because they're getting a massive reduction in inflammation in that area. So I think the two are um, tied together. I couldn't find any studies, for example, like people that were having maybe headaches or you know uh, pain that wasn't associated at all with joint problems or um, arthritis 
and it would be interesting to see if there is any benefit to that there is a lot of theoretical stuff out there that because it reduces inflammation um, in joints and that they believe that it would also reduce inflammation in other parts of the body and that would in turn lead to reduction in pain but again the evidence of that is scant you know there's a little bit out there there's been a couple of studies in that area and it's pointing towards the the positive side of that but there's nowhere near enough to say that yes it definitely reduces inflammation all around the body and um, there's nowhere near enough to say it will just drastically reduce all different types of pain we just don't know cardiovascular so another one that I'm very interested in because as we get older that you know that's something that concerns me and um, I've, I've had a, a few um, relatives and friends have cardiovascular issues so uh, I'm you know obviously very concerned about that myself and again there are a few studies showing that this has two effects in these studies uh, number one, it seemed to be able to lower blood pressure in people that had higher levels of blood pressure. And it's theorized that it was doing that by um, increasing resistance artery endothelial production, which is a bit of a mouthful. And I'm certainly not going to try and uh, explain that. I know very little about it myself, but that is directly linked to blood pressure. And the other thing that it's supposed to do, which has again been looked at in a very small amount of studies, is to do with lowering cholesterol. Um, that's going to be something that's going to take a good few years of studying to, to ascertain because it becomes very difficult to you know, separate all the different factors when you take a group of people and you just give them turmeric and then you start looking at their cholesterol levels you know what else are they eating what are they doing in the day what sort of exercise are they taking you've got to change all these factors and try and regulate them i mean the ideal idea would be you sort of locked everyone in the room you gave them all the exact same food and the only difference would be half of them had the the turmeric and half of them didn't for example but you know that becomes very difficult people have to go to work they have to live and you can't just keep people locked in a room for a year whilst you uh, conduct a study it would cost millions and millions of pounds and uh, there isn't that kind of money out there for it the conspiracists would say there's not enough money out there for it because the drug companies haven't got any sort of uh, horse in the game here you know it's a it's a cheap supplement that anyone can kind of sell so um, you're going to find maybe that there's limited studies on it. I don't know um, about that. You know, I, I don't know if uh, the, the big pharma have a, a role to play in um, sort of holding some of these more natural uh, remedies back or, you know, maybe um, ensuring they don't get funding or something. But I would certainly imagine that drug companies aren't tripping over themselves to fund these things with their own pockets, that's for sure. So the other one that was interesting to me was depression. Uh, people were talking about using turmeric for um, depression, making them feel better. And again, there's a small amount of studies showing that turmeric did have some um, benefits possibly uh, in treating depression. They thought in these studies that it may be able to boost brain-derived neurotrophic factor which again, I'm not going to get into the, the long grass on this. You know, this is a sort of layman's video. If you want to go and study this stuff further, go and have a look at the studies yourself. If you just type in um, curcumin or turmeric and scientific studies, health benefits, etc., you'll start finding all this stuff. Uh, try and look on the um, websites that are legitimate websites for studies. You know, don't look at sort of um, health org or whatever you try and look at the government based websites that are hosting these studies and things from legitimate educational sources maybe like harvard and, and places like that if if you're looking at like um private news sites um livestrong.com or um you know some place that's selling supplements or whatever i'd definitely be a bit more dubious about what you see there try and actually get to the studies themselves and make sure they're legitimate peer-reviewed studies so um depression wise 
they actually um, think that it may also boost serotonin and dopamine. Now, if that's true, that would be fantastic because this, in effect, would be a, a natural and um, better thing to do than to take the various different awful drugs that are out there that are, you know, boosting those things. Um, like Prozac, for example, is, is one that was very popular and still remains widely prescribed. And most of those drugs have awful side effects. I mean, some of those um, serotonin boosting drugs, I think they're um, SSRI, serotonin reuptake inhibitors, something like that. Um, but they basically lead to you having more serotonin uh, in the body, in the brain, that um, they can actually, one of the side effects is that they can lead to suicidal thoughts. So if you're depressed and you're taking those drugs, you know, to prevent you from being more depressed and you end up with suicidal thoughts, that's pretty ironic. Uh, so again, you know, if you're, you know, concerned about um, feeling depressed and you're wondering if there's anything natural you can try, I would always suggest you go to your doctor and you take his advice. But if there's a natural thing out there that is basically very cost effective and doesn't seem to have any negative issues to people, then it would certainly be worth a go. You know, I don't see any harm in, in trying it. And if you personally notice that it's having some sort of benefit, then keep doing it because, you know, why not? It's cheap, it has no side effects. And then the last of all, and, and the, probably the most concerning one from an ethical point of view that I often see, you know, in some of the more dubious websites is the um, cancer cure claims. And the there's lots of substances that you could put in a um, test tube with some cancer cells and it will show them eradicating the cancer cells. That doesn't necessarily compute to that working in the human body. You know, um, there's loads and loads of stuff that will eradicate cancer cells, but that doesn't always mean that it will work for human beings. And the same with animal studies. There's lots and lots of studies out there for various different substances showing that, oh, it eradicated cancer in rats or it eradicated cancer in X and Y type animal. Um, but you have to be very careful of suddenly sort of reading all that across and believing that that's a magical cure for cancer. There can be correlation in those kind of studies and sometimes there can be none whatsoever with human subjects. So really animal studies and, you know, um, studies where they're just looking at the cells and how they're affected um, on a Petri dish, you know, with another substance. Those are like preliminary things that scientists will do before they enter into human trials, because if there was absolutely no results from either of those, it would probably be pretty pointless to start dosing humans with it. Uh, so, you know, they're not things that scientists do to show efficacy. Oh, look, this will definitely work in humans because it cured a rat. That isn't why they're doing that. Um, but there's certainly some promising data coming out of those studies. Um, the few that have been done that you know that they they show that there there is possibly some benefit um they're certainly not saying that if you just took turmeric on its own and nothing else that that would eradicate cancer or prevent you getting cancer um, the studies that i did look at were giving turmeric to patients that were on various different other um, prescription and you know medical uh, remedies for cancer treatment and that they thought that maybe the group that was having the turmeric as well had some benefits. So there were some studies done on people that had colon cancer and they were going through the standard treatment programs, you know, via their doctors and via the hospital. And some of those patients were given the turmeric supplement as well. And it did show that some of those people had reduced lesions in the 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 place where the cancer was in the colorectal region. So that was very interesting and it could be very positive, but I would be very skeptical, you know, skeptical about just taking that on board and, and thinking it's some kind of miracle cure. Um, but again, it's something that it would be worth talking to your doctor about. So if you can buy it extremely cheaply from the health food shop, 
why not take it as well I don't think it's going to do any harm but ask your doctor first because I'm certainly not an expert in um, the type of treatments and medications that people would have when they're um, suffering from cancer but as far as I can see for most things it's pretty benign and uh, if you've got any of the things we spoke about above or you're you know, feeling a bit low and you want to try something that has a chance of elevating your mood then it's worth a try if you've got like me joint pain it's definitely worth a try I will vouch for that you know if you've got joint pain I would 100% buy some of the uh, the turmeric supp supplements and and buy them from a, a legitimate supplier because I'm sure there's loads and loads of snake oil salesmen that are just selling inert tablets out there and colouring them yellow or whatever so you know try it try and buy it from somewhere decent well, thanks, guys. I hope that has piqued your interest, maybe, and answered a few questions. I'm going to continue taking my turmeric supplements. And uh, if you are taking them as well, or you're going to take them, leave a comment. Let us know how you're getting on.